All right, welcome back, ladies. Uh, so, is anybody else having a problem with the website? It's not showing the stuff. I had to open it in a different browser for the stuff to actually show up. Okay. So it worked just fine before on my laptop, but hmm. okay. Well, we'll figure out how to do it. It'll be great. And all right, so let's talk about lenses. So this lab is focusing on what's known as thin lenses. So thin lenses are, by definition, a lens whose thickness is much smaller than its radius of curvature. So this is a lens uh, whose thickness <coughs> is much smaller than its radius of curvature. So in general, we have basically two different types of thin lenses. Uh, there's what's known as a converging lens and then what's known as a diverging lens. <clears throat> so what's the difference between those? So typically a converging lens is something that looks similar to this. Okay, so here, uh, so we have what's known as the principal axis. So this line that bisects through the center is what's known as the principal axis. And this thing has two focal points. So one is on this side, one is on this side. So this is what's known as the focal point. And this is called a converging lens because of its focal point. So if I sent light parallel to the principal, so this is where all the light is coming in, what happens then is the light is gonna come through, hit the center part of this lens, and then it gets refracted and gets refracted such that all of the light rays get bent through the focal point. Okay. I have light rays which are coming in parallel to the principal. All these light rays, oops, that's a horrible light ray. <laughs> that's better. Gets bent such they pass all through the same point, which is what's known as the focal point. So this point here, F, is what we call the focal point. So this is why it's called the converging lens. So this is when you take light, it goes through, and then all of it converges to a single point where all the intensity then gets at this single point. So this is why it's called the converging lens. So this would be like a microphone, uh, a magnifying glass that you could take outside and kill ants in the middle of the summertime. So that's when you hold it up. In this case, it shines all the light to this particular point. A uh, diverging lens <coughs> is one where in this case, usually it gets bent out like this. So I have something that looks more like this guy. So again, here, if I have my principal axis, which again bisects the lens, again, we're gonna take the same thing. So we're gonna have light rays come in parallel to the principal axis. What happens with the diverging lens is instead of having all the light rays refract to a single point, they all actually refract away and end up spreading out. So they diverge away from each other. That's why it's called the diverging lens. But this happens in such a way as if I ray trace all these lines backwards, so if I follow this guy backwards, I follow this guy backwards and this guy backwards, what happens is all of these right rays end up diverging away from the single point on this side, F, which is also what's known as the focal point. <clears throat> so basically with a diverging lens, what it appears is if I follow these rays backwards, it appears as if all of these rays start off at a single point on the behind side of the lens, which is what's known as the focal point. So all these guys spread away instead of converging to each other onto uh, this side. Okay. So this one's called a diverging lens. So we have these two different types of lenses. Now, these two different types of lenses will then create different types of images. So when we think about lenses, we usually want to think about different types of images which are created. So let's talk about image formation. So first let's talk about what happens with a converging lens. So let's say again, here's my principal axis. 
put a focal point on this side, I have a focal point on this side. We're gonna find what's called the focal length, which is the distance from the center of the lens to that focal point. This is what we're call little f. Well, little f is what's known as the focal length. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take an object. So let's say here's my object, and we put it some distance in front of the lens. So the distance then from the center of the lens to the location then of the object is what's known as the object distance. Uh, I'm trying to remember what your book does. I think it's S and S prime. Actually, no, I think it's DO, okay. So DO, we're gonna call then the object distance. So that's the distance from the center of the lens to the location of the object. So to create then our image, we're gonna draw what are known as rays. So we talked about rays before uh, on Wednesday. So here we're gonna draw typically three principal rays. The first ray we're gonna draw is a ray which goes in initially parallel to the principal hits the center of the lens, and then that guy gets refracted through the focal point, which I kind of missed there, but that's fine. We'll go down this way, that's better. And then keeps carrying off in this direction. So this is then ray number one. So ray number one is gonna be that guy. That's too big. That's fine. We'll live with that. Ray number two then is going to be the ray which then starts off here goes through the focal point on this side of the lens, hits the center of the lens, and then gets refracted parallel to the principal on this side. Okay. So again, we're gonna start this guy here. It's gonna go down through the focal point on this side, hit the center of the lens, and then gets refracted parallel to the principal. So that's ray number two. So this is ray number two. And the first one was what, ray number one. Finally, we typically, typically you only need to draw two rays, but we're gonna draw three. The third ray, we're gonna start here at the tip, go through the center of the lens. If we go directly through the center of the lens, that guy's gonna keep going non-refract at all. So it's not gonna change any directions. Okay, so it's just gonna pass through the center of the lens, and then it's gonna pass through here. And this is then ray number three. Okay. Where these three rays meet, that is going to be the location of the image. So the image then is going to be from the principal line and then point down to the location where these three guys meet. Okay. So this is what we call the image. So then the distance from the center of the lens to where that guy is created is going to be called DI, where DI is what's known as the image distance. Okay. Now, we'll talk more about this in class. I don't want to bore you too much with this. But basically, where the image is located is going to be dependent on where it is I put the object. So if I put the object here, it'll be here. If I put it inside of here, it actually gets much closer. And if I put it on the inside, it's gonna show up someplace outside, but we'll, we'll talk about that actually in class. So <clears throat> the relationship between all these things is the following. So one over the image distance plus one over the object distance is equal to one over the focal length. This is what's known as the thin lens equation. So the thin lens equation tells me where my image is going to be located based off of the focal length and of the object distance. Okay, so this is what's known as the thin lens equation. Okay. Now, if I was dealing with more than one lens, so in most optical instruments, things like telescopes and magnifying glasses, or not magnifying glasses, microscopes, things like that, we usually have more than one lens. So this is what you did in the pre-lab. So I'm sure everybody knows how to do this, but we'll talk about it real quick anyways. So the way that this works is, let's say we have two lenses. So here I'm going to have two converging lenses. So let's say here's my two converging lenses. Let's say these guys are separated by a distance of D. Okay. So this guy's gonna have his own focal points. So F1, F2. 
This one's going to have his own, I'm oh, sorry, F1 and F1. This one's going to have his own focal point, so F2 and F2. And again, what we're going to do here is we're going to again put in an object. So here's going to be my object. And we want to know what is the image location for this guy. So the way that we do this, at least drawing wise, is we're going to draw the image that this guy creates from the first lens by ignoring the second lens. Once we create that image, that's what we call a virtual image, which is then going to <clears throat> create now a, become the object now for the second lens, and then that's gonna create a new final image, okay? So let's see how this works. So the way this is gonna work is we're gonna start off with those two principles we're gonna draw before. So we're gonna draw this principle right, it's gonna come in, hit through here, again, refract through the focal point, go off down in this direction. Typically, I'm only going to draw rays one and two. So this one's going to come down through here, through this focal point, hit the center of the lens, refract parallel to the principal. Where those two meet is then going to give me my image, which we're going to call image one. So this distance here is going to become object image or object one. This distance here is now going to be image one. This image now becomes the object for the second lens. So for the second lens, we're now gonna redraw the principles. So this one's gonna come in parallel, hit the lens, get refracted through the focal points. This one's gonna come off in this direction. Then from here, we're gonna draw the one that goes through here, hits the center, gets refracted outward. And again, where these two meet, this is gonna give me my final image location. And this is my final image. So when you're looking in something like a microscope, this is your final image or your telescope. This is the image that you're going to see. You usually don't see this one. Okay. <clears throat> so this distance from here to here is what we're gonna call object distance two. This distance from here to here then is going to become, this out of the way for now, uh, image distance two. So image distance two. So mathematically, the way that you do this, as you saw in the pre-lab, is you first find where this image distance is based off of using that Thin's lens equation for this guy. So here you would say one over the image distance one plus one over the object distance one must be equal to one over focal length one. So from here, you would then find this image distance. Here, again, what happens then is that this distance plus this distance must be equal to the distance between the two lenses. So I must have that image distance one plus object distance two must be equal to the distance between the two lenses, which means then that object distance two is then equal to the distance between the lenses minus then image distance one. Once I find that, then I can use again the thin lens equation onto this portion here to then finally determine the final object or final image distance, image, image distance two, if I can speak, there we go. So I'm gonna then say that one over object distance two plus one over image distance two is then equal to one over focal length two. Okay. okay. <clears throat> So this is what we're gonna be playing with in this lab. So we're gonna be looking at two lenses with some fixed distance between the two, and then we're going to try to find out what is this final image location. We're gonna do this using the simulation and also do this uh, mathematically, and then again, look at the comparison between the two of these. Now, one other thing to note is going back to this guy, we also define what's known as the magnification. Let's talk about magnification. So the magnification is defined as M, which is equal to negative the image distance divided by the object distance, which is equal to the image height divided by the object height. Okay. So this object has a height, we call that H object. This image has a height of H image. So this is what we call the magnification. So this tells me how much bigger or smaller the image is compared to the object. So that's what we call the magnification. When it comes to two lenses, it turns out that the total magnification is then simply equal to the product of the magnification. So here we get a magnification from the first lens times magnification from the second lens. So it's gonna be the same thing then as minus the 
image distance from the first divided by the object distance from the first times then negative the image distance from the second divided by the object distance from the second, which is then simply equal to the image distance one times the image distance two divided by object distance one times object distance two. Okay, so this is the total magnification if I have two lenses. If I have three lenses, then I simply multiply all three magnifications together. Okay. So what does a negative sign mean? So the negative sign simply tells me, is my image upright or inverted? So as it's drawn here, this image is what's called an inverted image. So it's called inverted because it's in the opposite orientation. So notice here that this is originally pointing straight up. This is now pointing straight down. So this is what's called inverted. As opposed to, if I go back to my two, this image then would be called upright. So this would be an upright image. It's upright because it's in the same orientation. Going back to here, this type of image is what's called a real image. This one here is also a real image. So this is an upright real image, and the other one is an inverted real image. So what is a real image? What a real image is, is imagine if I took a piece of paper and I put it at the location of the image, if the image shows up on this piece of paper, meaning light actually passes through it, this is what we call a real image. As opposed to a virtual image, a virtual image is where an image is actually looks like it's created, but no light actually passes through it. This is what's called a virtual image. Uh, again, we'll talk more about this in class, uh, but a lot of different types of scenarios will give us either real or inverted. I don't want to confuse you too much because it's not exactly relevant to the lab that we're doing right now. Okay. So good. <clears throat> so let's talk about, so I'm gonna do what Tara said. I'm gonna try to open a different browser. So let me try doing a, uh, Safari here, even though I haven't used Safari in like 100 years. So let's give it a try. My computer is getting slower and slower every day. And it stopped raining, by the way. So it rained long enough to get me smoke soaked while I took out the garbage and then stopped raining because that's, that's just the way it works. <laughs> so let's try this. Let's see if this one opens. Not secure. Good. Okay. So we're going to be playing with this guy. So this is uh, our two lenses that we're going to be playing with. So here, if we follow what the lab manual says, so in the first part, we're going to uh, take the first lens, which is the blue lens, and set its focal length equal to 25 uh, in whatever units that this thing happens to be, because uh, it never says what it is. Uh, bad developers, but that's fine. Uh, so let's see, so this is at, what, 150, so we want to put 2F then at negative 200, okay, so that's that one. And then the red one, uh, we're going to set, so his focal length is 50, okay, so that means we want F here to be put at 50, because he's at 200, we want to put him at 250, good. So the next thing is, and we want to set the lenses equal to 75 centimeters apart. So if he's at negative 150, then we want him to be at about 25, okay? Good. <clears throat> so from here, we then want to look at where is the location of this final image. So from here, we want to try to guesstimate from this beautiful uh, axis that they have drawn on here where the location of this image is, so for that final one. So here we can zoom in to get a little bit better idea of where it is, we can zoom out, et cetera, okay? So basically, what you'll have to do then is calculate based off of this object distance. So you should be able to move this object distance wherever you want it to be. So if you can move it to here. So initially, this is going to be at, what, 100 centimeters away. So that's gonna be your object distance. Then you can calculate your image distance from the fact that they're 75 centimeters away from each other. You can then calculate the new object distance. From that new object distance, you're then gonna calculate your final image distance. So from here, then you want to measure that image distance. <clears throat> and 
then again, you can zoom in and zoom out to do that. And then what you want to do is, again, theoretically calculate it and also measure it. And then you want to compare those two things using discrepancies. Okay? So absolute relative discrepancies. So then, once you do it at 75, then you're going to do it at 100 centimeters and then 150 centimeters and then 200. So first it's at 75. So from 75, you want to do it to 100 and then 150 and then finally 200. So same thing. So you're going to calculate the image distance, the new object distance, and then the final image distance. Compare those things for all set of those uh, using relative and absolute discrepancies. If I zoom in, get a better idea where that guy actually is. Okay. It's okay. From there, we're finally going to, for 200 centimeters, make the last or the second lens now a diverging lens. Okay. So for that one, let me zoom out here. The way to make it into a diverging lens is you're simply going to take this focal length here and then pull it to the other side. When you pull it to the other side, that's going to convert it now into a diverging lens, which means that your image is now going to be created. Where is it? So where these guys cross. Okay. Oh, it's going to be way back here. Oh, there he is. Sorry. There he is. That little tiny. There he is. <laughs> He's sitting right there. So, again, you want to calculate that location and also measure that location and then again compare that using relative and absolute discrepancies. You guys see that little guy right there? Yeah. A little hard to see at first, but I'm trying to ray trace that guy backwards. Everybody's okay? It's okay. So okay. <clears throat> Oops, wrong direction. So again, that's all we're doing. So again, put this guy back on to converging. So again, we're doing four sets of converging. So again, first is when they are 75, and then 100 and then 150, and then 200. And again, each time you want to calculate the uh, image distance, second object distance, and then second image distance. But the only thing you're comparing is the second image distance to that experimental versus theoretical, and then compare those using absolute relative discrepancies. And then again, for the last part, he was going to simply pull this guy to the other side, turn him into a diverging lens, and then do the same thing. Okay. Now, also, you want to do the height as well. So the image height, again, once you have this guy set up, so let me bring this back to where it was. So put it back at 75. So we also want to do the magnification for this guy as well. Okay. So you also want to measure the height that this guy is. So this is going to be about, what, maybe 20 centimeters. So again, you want to theoretically calculate the image heights as well as measure it from here to calculate then the magnification to then find that image height. Do the same thing. Image height, you want to find the absolute and relative discrepancies for, for that guy as well. Right. So for all five sets of those, you want to measure the distance from the second lens to the location that it is created. So this is going to be the image distance. Also measure the image height. Calculate that image distance theoretically. Compare that to the actual measurements, relative and absolute discrepancies. From the magnifications, calculate the total magnification. Calculate then your image height, and then compare that to the actual image height. Again, absolute to relative discrepancies. So do that for all five sets. So for all those four different <coughs> uh, spatial distances between the two and also then for the final lens as well. For the diverging lens. Are we okay? Not too bad. Uh, and then that's it. That is then all of our labs that we're doing for this semester. So, uh, anybody have any questions on any of these things? No, everybody's doing okay. 
So as usual, uh, I'll be here. So if you have any questions, uh, go ahead and ask. I'll try to get some of the exam grade in in this time since I actually had a couple hours to get that done. <laughs> get caught up on that a little bit. Uh, so otherwise, uh, if nobody has any questions, then I'll let you get working on those. If you have any questions, let ask. Otherwise, I'll see everybody tomorrow.